Welcome to Istanbul, a former European... Welcome to Istanbul, a former European capital of culture and just an amazing location 
for this, the third stop on the International Skating Union's Junior Grand Prix of Figure Skating. I'm Mark Henretti and I'll be joined remotely by the brilliant Ted Barton and we look forward to seeing this final event of the day. As was the case in the women's event, we get now to see a former winner already on the Junior Grand Prix series, with Ryo Nakata from Japan vying to gain his spot at the Junior Grand Prix final in December in Beijing. Ryo will be joined by 26 other men taking part in this men's shot program coming up next. Further scenes of this beautiful city full of culture that hosts this third stop on the Junior Grand Prix. You can see there, Ted, just what an amazing location this is as we head towards the Absolutely. final event of the games. Absolutely stunning. That is just beautiful. Okay, now I'm jealous again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm only seeing the same shots as you on the screen. I haven't actually seen that in person, so don't don't fret too much. You'd probably be stuck here in the ring with you me. You shouldn't too. unveil that. You just said, "Oh yeah, I was standing <laughs> at the top of there." You know, just you know. As we take a look at the starting order for the junior men's short program, we've had the women's short a little earlier today. 35 women, and and then we've had eight pair teams, and now we will conclude day one from Istanbul with the men's short program. And again, so many different skating nations represented. And fascinating that, not fascinating necessarily, but that the event is started, <laughs> as was the women's event, by a Japanese skater with Ryo Nakata. Opening proceedings, what a great way to start this men's short program on the final event of the day. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's an open draw, so anything can happen in the short program. And as we take a look at the officials who we thank very much for spending really a lifetime <laughs> in, in the sport and being trained as officials and taking time off work and time away from family to officiate these competitions as we look also at the technical panel. Yeah, I know it's, uh, it's, it's been very interesting. We've seen some really good skating in the pairs, of course. There are a bunch of good skaters in the women. They didn't have the most brilliant event. I mean, there were mistakes, not the top group. The top group all skated very well. Um, but some of the skaters in the middle are much better than what they had delivered today. I'm sure we'll see uh, them pick that up in the free program. And uh, some really nice pair skating as well. And what are we going to get out of the men's event here? Mm. We'll find out. Yeah, and again, I suppose now, as we look towards the later stages of the Junior Grand Prix series, we start to quiz and question and wonder, well, what's going to happen for those top six spots that get to the Junior Grand Prix final and you know we wouldn't have predicted necessarily that Adam Hagara would have been in such contention and the knock-on impact of that as well would there then be you know will he be able to oust some of the more expected skating nations in qualifying for Beijing so that just keeps it exciting I you know we have no preference we're just excited to see you know a duel oh, because really? competition yeah. kind of pushes people yeah, it makes it, it it makes everyone better, and so it's nice. It's wonderful to have nations that are dominant, but it's also nice to see other nations come up and challenge them, and that's the whole idea. You know, I mean, if you're if you're Japan or Korea, you're happy because you're you know, <laughs> dominating at least in the women's, right? So, um, but at the same time, you know, as a sport, it's great to see the progress of other federations being made, particularly the juniors, of course. Indeed, as we see, Leona Kata just looking so comfortable on the triple axel. You, know, you just have to question also for now the athletes when they're coming to their second Grand Prix assignment, the impact of that on their training, especially if your training base is in Japan and say you've been in Bangkok and then you've traveled home and then you know, a short time later you're returning to travel and a travel day takes up you know, obviously the travel itself, but then acclimatizing to different time zones has an impact on the body as well. And, and therefore the run-throughs are affected. And, and I think run-throughs are so critical and that's why it's such a necessity for the athletes to have done sufficient run-throughs in the off season to be able to you know, sort of bank on that training and that cardiovascular capability when it comes to the season and when they maybe don't get the chance to run through as much as they would ordinarily dependent upon their assignments. 
Yeah, and when we talk about run-throughs, for those viewers that may not know exactly what we're talking about, that's running your program from the first note to the end, but not sort of stopping part way and going, oh, well, I missed that. Okay, well, let me let me catch up here. It's running your program, whether it's perfect or whether there's five falls in it, from the first note to the last note. That's conditioning, physical conditioning. That's really important, but it's also a little bit of muscle memory. It's learning how to adapt when you've made a mistake and not let that get you down and you can't train that unless you actually run your programs so it is the hardest part of skating yeah. is doing those run throughs so that there is no fatigue or very little fatigue at the end of the program uh, and psychologically you're not sorry oh my god I gotta run through the program you don't fear it because you run it every day and for those That's what we're talking about on the run throughs yeah for those that, <laughs> that haven't done a free skate run through as we see <laughs> the bands, rink side, camera's other side. <laughs> um, yeah, you go, hold the flag, come on. Yeah. The run through is so incredibly exhausting. And what makes our sport even more fascinating is that crossover between aerobic and anaerobic capacity. And so to be able to maintain endurance for three and a half minutes at such a high heart rate is just, oh, I still have PTSD from it. <laughs> I could tell you. I can, mm -hmm. I can tell you hated it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> during I, the run throughs. I just, I, I, oh, I don't know. I think I just. Well, you had to lift and do all. I mean, as a, as a single skater, you just had to run the program, and you didn't have to deal with anybody else. But I mean, running the program with a partner, you know, there's all sorts of added, <laughs> you know, potential items <laughs> which you have to cope with, right? And it's quite a mental aspect for some of the athletes that because of the physicality and the exhaustion you know, it can become quite overwhelming. And so I think that for, for many, and certainly for myself, uh, the mental aspect of it then adversely affected me, whereas there are some athletes who can do the relevant brain space work to just relish the fact that, oh, I'm going to do a run through and that's going to get me more prepped and ready for competition. And that's the ultimate mm -hmm. mental brain space. Yeah, it all, exactly. It all depends on how you look at whether it's the glass is half full or half mm. empty, right? So I never really feared that. Matter of fact, I would do two or three run-throughs in a wow, day because I couldn't really sleep. W I, I couldn't really sleep well unless I had done one clean. Wow. So if I had not skated a clean program, of course, this is back in the 70s, but if I had not skated a clean program, I was restless during the night. That's kind of sick, actually. But well, anyways, you, it it made, it's what it was. It's what it drove I'm you. I'm sure you were incredibly fit. Yeah, fair. yeah. I was then, yes, not now, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> As we get started in the men's short program, talking about the run-throughs. This is an easy one. It's a short program. The stress is on the technical elements, of course. As we see, the winner in Bangkok of the men's event. Second event here on the Junior Grand Prix for Rio. Wanting to secure, if he takes a win, he's going to secure himself a spot in the Junior Grand Prix final. And it all starts right now. Our first competitor from Japan, Rio Nakata, 14 years old. Second Junior Grand Prix season. Looking to grab that Junior Grand Prix final spot. And it all starts right here. 75, 76.15 personal best last season. This season was 75.28 in week one. Skating to God Particle by Hans Zimmer.
Well, the reaction to the performance from Rio Nakata suggests he's a little disappointed. He will celebrate his 15th birthday tomorrow. But at just 14 years old, his standards and expectations of himself obviously incredibly high given the mistake and the reaction to the triple axel. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. They do these run-throughs, clean run-throughs every single day. So making a mistake is something that is not normal and not desired, obviously, <laughs> in competition. So it wasn't a major mistake. It was a step out of the triple axel. But some other wonderful qualities. That triple toe, triple toe, it looks so easy. And done that efficiently, probably physically is easy. Here's the triple axel. Little bit of a lean starting, too far back in the heel. Does a good job just to step out instead of taking the fall. Here's the triple Lutz. This was also extremely well done. But it's the triple toe, triple toe, triple toe combination. Here it is. That looks so simple. When it is efficient, and you have the position like that, physically, it is not that demanding. But it's difficult to get it to that point. It takes lots, it takes hundreds and hundreds of repetitions, of course, as we take a look at the step sequence. And it's good that, because we know he can do the quad toe, which he did so successfully the last time, that his quad toe hasn't impacted adversely in his triple toe. Sometimes that's the case, as we see pretty good mm -hmm. command of the features. This was good, Ted, because in the last event on the change camel spin, Rio only achieved a level two, but the te technical panel here giving it the level four. So what he lost on the axle doesn't recoup the same amount by getting two levels higher and change camel, but it certainly will minimize the damage from the mistake. Yeah. Uh, this is a really fit athlete and confident as well. It was a great free program. He skated to take the title in Bangkok. We'll take a look at the short program score here. 73.55, 76.15 was his personal best. So this is a bit short of the season's best as well. First skater out of the competition, but sets a pretty high bar. He'll, he'll be fairly comfortable at the end of this event. And we wish him a happy birthday for tomorrow. We'll see him again as the next day. Yeah. <laughs> Our next competitor comes from Hungary, Alexei Lysenko, 16 years old, second junior Grand Prix season, Hungarian senior bronze medalist. 48.74 personal best. He'll skate the world we know.
16-year-old Alexei Vlasenko representing Hungary. His brother competed last week in Linz, Austria. He was 12th at the 21 there. And now the younger sibling competes here in Istanbul. Wow, that's, that's interesting. The family probably back home watching yeah. week to week. The, the kids skating. Amazing. Very quick rotator, nice and straight and strong in the air. Tends to have a little bit of the head forward, rounded shoulders sometimes a little bit, but overall good jump technique, quick in the air as we take a look at the triple Lutz. Gets that out, gets the free leg back nicely. Want to just stand up a little bit straighter. Here's the double axle, arms back, follow through with the free leg, and this is over rotate, a little bit hunchy as well. Mm. So just was not on top of the landing foot, making contact with the ice. But the triple loop comes up really nicely. Watch that right side, straight up over the right hip, nice and straight in the air. Gets the free leg back up in the double toe loop. Interesting that the first two competitors not choosing flip as their combo, unlike in the women's event. This was good though, the windmill illusion. It's always interesting to see what jumps the skaters gravitate towards for their choice in the combo. Normally you would go for the highest base value, but no guarantee if it's more difficult for the athlete. So some, what jump were you, Ted? What was your favorite? Lots. Ah, high base value. I like the Happy days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't say I was good at it. I just liked it, but. <laughs> so. The elder sibling, Alexander Vlasenko, scored 64.73. Alexei won't be able to match that, but will he get close to his 48.74 PB from last year's Solidarity Cup? Yeah, I wonder what goes around the, you know, the dinner table at night. You know, <laughs> do they talk about skating? Do they challenge each other? Do they motivate each other? Or He's going to have more potatoes for more strength for the run through the next day. <laughs> the fight yeah, the <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in a way, it, it's probably interesting dynamics. You know, they probably do Fascinate. help each other and push each other along the way. Absolutely. As they wait for the scores. There's three elements under review, and we'll see the short program score now. They're looking to beat a 48.78. This falls a little bit short on that, a 47.44 for Alexei Lysenko from Hungary, and that'll put him currently into second place. The next competitor comes from Romania, 14-year-old Razvan Sionic. This is his first Junior Grand Prix event, new to the circuit. And some great opportunity for experience to be gained here as he will skate to way down we go.
Well, an example of a skater who delivered what they were capable of. Congratulations to Razman Sionak from Romania. Simple content, but a happy and satisfied skater, which is the ultimate objective for all. Beautiful camel spins, Mark. Mm. Uh, the leg position, well above the hip. That was really nicely done. We'll take a look at some of the elements. And he's at a certain stage of development. And as you mentioned, he delivered what he's capable of doing and what he planned to do. So mission accomplished here. We take a look at the triple south. Gets the free leg back just in time to put the pick into the toe loop. And the double axel. Makes that work. You're going to want to, you know, straight back a little bit more and stretch and point the free leg. Just those small little details. There's the double lutz. Nice spread eagle here. And there's that back camel position of the leg well above the hip. Awesome. Good transitional content, like some harder than some of the other skaters who are much more experienced or more seasoned than we may see. Use the spread eagle, utilize that, utilize the oiler, use the low range of movement. So good work on the composition of the program. And I, I thought also, Ted, you know, good technique to facilitate the ability for triples to be done. Just not at this stage to have them ready to be, you know, or the harder no triples question. to be done. You know, all the ingredients are there in this young skater uh, for those triples to be done. And we may see, who knows, we might see something in the free program. But certainly the basic uh, body core is strong. He leaves the air, uh, leaves the ice quickly, into rotation quickly. All of it's there. It's just mileage and it's just quickness and timing, if you will. And, and we'll see if we, if we see a triple in the free program. But the basics, foundation, all good. And knowing that he was intermediate novice last season, that's you know, a huge jump to be taking. So this experience here, junior and international, massive. Well, let's take a look at the score. Parazan, this young from Romania. A 36.82, and that will put Parazan currently into third place. Sweden, Our next competitor comes from Sweden, 16-year-old Elias Sayed. First Junior Grand Prix event, fifth at the Junior Swedish National Championships last season. And he's going to skate to, it says, Mission Impossible, Hans Zimmer.
Well, Sweden's Elias Syed born in Uppsala. And what a great treat to see. And we haven't seen him on the Junior Grand Prix, but interestingly, seeing that he did the Cranberry Cup, Ted, that gives us an indication. It's scoring over 60 there. That this is a talented young skater who's obviously been working very hard. And now we get to see him debut on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. And as soon as I announced that he's getting the Mission Impossible, I look up and see <laughs> the, the costume, and I go, no, that can't be working here. So <laughs> that was what was, uh, was on the bio sheet. That was not Mission Impossible. But great job. Really nice. Let's take a look. Good speed to the takeoff. The triple mm. flip reloads. Keeps the flow moving between the two jumps, really nice. which is so important for the GOE quality. Beautiful triple toe loop after that. And as he comes down to the ice for the Lutz, executes it very, very nicely, very easily. Mm, really effortless looking looks. Yeah. And good speed in that back camel. Look at the change of position. Gets difficult feature. And that is in at a level three. So just missing one of the possible four features is the double axle. Yeah, right. I think there's a, I want to talk about that. He grabs the snow, yeah. I'm not sure if there was any. Throws it in the air. I didn't see it, but I get the effect, right? And uh, also, Alexei Yagodin. Uh, very he brave to do it at the judges. I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, totally. But he's, yeah, Gooden did it um, in the middle of the ring. I thought, gosh, Elias, you've got some bravery throwing that at the judges. Let's see how the <laughs> presentation score goes. Down. Actually, presentation score given and looks higher than the others. <laughs> and, and, and in the middle of the step sequence. Yeah. You know, to look back, grab your blade, and grab some snow. <laughs> yeah, that's a difficult feature. Yeah. I mean, credit for it. A 63.76, that's a great score for Laia Sayed of Sweden. He's happy about that. There you go. Our next competitor comes from Slovakia, 16-year-old Luka Vakovic. Second Junior Grand Prix season. He had a 59.89 last season on the Junior Grand Prix, which is a pretty good score. And he'll be looking to beat that here, skating to speak softly love from the Godfather.
16-year-old Lukas Vaklavic from Slovakia. He's had seven different pairs of skates in recent months, couldn't break them in, or was having various different issues with them. So I'm sure, despite all of those challenges in the off-season, Lukas will be delighted to have delivered and delivered convincingly here in Istanbul in the shop program. Wow, that was very impressive. This man is very quick and agile, exciting to watch. Wonderful lift on the takeoffs. You can see that on the jumps. Got some really fine qualities. Let's take a look here. Watch oh. the explosion way up into the air, into the double toe loop. Probably destined for triple. Not in that plan. But watch the double axle. Again, down in the knee and snaps way up. This so, is going to be triple. So much extremely time for triple, easy. isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Look at the lats. Lifts way up in the air. Lots of time to check out. This is cool. I love to. Oh, you got it. boy. What is that? <laughs> over at leg, crown over. Wow. That's not easy. That takes some energy to a yeah. step sequence. It's unique and innovative. Great job. He has a younger brother, Thaddeus, who also skates. And I'm sure inspired back home watching Lucas skating so well. He had that. Great skate, check skate last year. It looks like all the hard work, all the challenges in the off season have, have paid off now. Yeah, that's really exciting. This man's got it all. Great posture, power, strength, agility. Got a little feeling for the music. You can see the as the energy picked up, so did he. Well, great to see actually yeah. what we can see is the judges have gone with the presentation of this higher than Rio Nakata. And you know, that's the real testament to, to Lukas' presentation skill. Yeah, and and to the judges to see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they picked that apart. They can see this program and this skater had good composition and performance and skating skills. And you are in the high sixes. Let's take a look at his overall score. He won't take... He won't beat the 73, but he could beat the 63. It's currently holding down second, we'll see. Personal best is 59, he'll beat that easily, 65.04. Great skate for Lucas. Just pumping the kiss and cry as he takes over his second position at this stage of the competition. Wonderful job. Our next competitor comes. Oh, no. no we are going to the next group. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I was about to announce him. <laughs> oh, five of them. It's been a long night here, Mark. Well, it's the like, sun is up, which is good. That's, I was going to say, that's helping me, but we it's should, been a long night. We should let the viewers know, Ted, what an amazing job you're doing because you are now. No, no, no. no. Until like day two. You haven't really had any sleep from one day to the next, and you've been in different, no, different not, places not, in Canada. Not too much, but. Uh, that, that's okay. It, it, the night went quickly working with you. I, I don't know if I could have done it by myself, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, the, the sun is up, so it's bright, and, and here we go. Yeah. Number two. Group two of, I think, five men, so. Ugh. Ted, you are a machine of the Junior Grand Prix. You are the patriarch of <laughs> Junior Grand Prix commentary, that is for sure. You can take that. Yeah, are indeed yeah. that. But a couple of the bolt, a couple of the bolts are getting loose. <laughs> you know, the screws are getting loose. And, you know, yeah, that's okay. It's just good to have you on board here, Mark. We work together it makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. Well, I and haven't more enjoyable. I haven't even kind of considered or thought too far about us both working remotely from Japan. Nor have I kind of fathomed out what time of the days will I try to sleep as we do the the night shift from a remote commentary there, but. Like you say, it'll be yeah, fun, so we'll never, get through. Well, we've never done this, and I think, you know, this is, we've talked about this in the past for all of our viewers, that the Junior Grand Prix is a uh, research and development uh, platform which allows the ISU, because it's the only property that they truly own, um, to experiment in social media and broadcast uh, and delivery of the event. So, like, for instance, the first time ever we had a... Uh, day in the life of um, a technical controller. Yeah. Like that never happened before. You know, we've done 
you know, skaters and coaches and things like that, but that was the technical controller, and I thought it was wonderful. And so, you know, we're able to do this broadcasting both live, that's what we prefer, you know, the rink, but there's always usually somebody on site and somebody remote. But for Osaka, next week, uh, we will both be remote. It's the first time we will have ever done that. We hope everything goes smoothly, <laughs> no question. It just gives the ISU flexibility as they move forward, as more people are brought on to help out in, um, you know, social media and in broadcast, is what are the possibilities and what do they need? Absolutely. And, you know, I get to the, the absolute privilege of seeing now as you watch the skaters is also to, also to see the volume of people that are working backstage. So I can see already in front of me Rosa and Naomi feverishly working away, part of the team, working so hard to do all the amazing content that they do. Gianmarco, Simone, every, all, so many people working here backstage. They're, I think uh, they're getting excited uh, that they're getting a shout out here. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm hoping that they that uh, we're able to do a day in the life of the production crew because when you take a look at what they have to do and the time they have to do it and turn that around to get that on social media, we get this live stream up and we've got sometimes issues with internet, sometimes yeah. issues with you know equipment. As we take a look at some of the Canadian <laughs> fans here, it it is it is a challenge and that crew is amazing. Love working with them. They're a lot of fun, that's for sure. So much fun. And Rosa was just telling me that, you know, in Bangkok, they were willing to work till four in the morning to get the content out. So what an amazing, you know, and, you know, you and I, Ted, we've spent our whole life skating. We are committed to the sport. These guys aren't all ice skaters, and yet they seem to have um, devoted themselves willingly um, to the crazy sport that is. <laughs> well, they've been very dedicated to, you know, making this um, enjoyable for all of the fans around the world, telling the stories. And I think they love what they do. They just didn't realize how long it was, <laughs> you know, how long hours it was. But, you know, we all love it. So it makes the job a lot easier when uh, it's a passion. Mm. It's not, not a job when it's so much fun. Mm. No. So I understand there's good espresso coffee there. Is that correct? You just texted me. Yes. So it so keeps you going? So I, I am, um, you know, it seems to be quite amazing that whenever I do these events, I don't know if it's the the worry that keeps me awake about making sure I've taken enough notes on all the skaters or it's because during every possible resurface, I go and grab a coffee. And the espresso coffee here is pretty good, pretty strong. <laughs> so um, <laughs> note taking will be abundant tonight. I think I could be awake all night. Oh, that's good. That's good. You you knock yourself out there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking Inspector, I need to... Inspector Hanradi. I need to be um, drinking coffee for us both because I don't quite know if I can handle the um, schedule that you've achieved this event. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. We've done it before. In the junior, unfortunately, living in North America, that's what happened. Most uh, competitions are in Europe or in Asia, so therefore you're overnight, right? So... But I'm lucky to live where I do, so I'm happy. And I suppose, you know, as talking about the time zones and the time changes, only serves to reaffirm some of the other challenges that, as we see the Mexican ice dancers take to their seat, some of the challenges that the skaters face. Because obviously, you know, it's for some of them, dependent upon their federations, it's incredibly expensive to travel over here and stay over here, so they may delay their travel as late as is possible. But then the knock-on impact of that is you know, dealing with the time zone changes and adjusting to that in time for your preparation. That's a gorgeous camel spin position. Oh, it's just beautiful. And the speed of it as well. Yeah, I know the federations help. You know, this is part of the learning ground here. You have to learn to travel. Be in a rink that's too cold or too hot or the ice is too soft or too hard. Yes. Yeah. So you have the fans pointing out. <laughs> and, and so you have to learn to cope because that happens in the seniors as well. So you have to learn that somewhere. And it's here on the Junior Grand Prix as we get started in group number two. skater in this group getting final words of instruction and encouragement from Lithuania Daniel Korobelnik 16 years old second junior grand prix season 41st at the world junior championships last season he is the Lithuanian junior champion 46.06 personal best from last season with skate shots by Imagine Dragons
Daniel Korobelnik from Lithuania concludes his short program and just I actually unfortunately didn't get the video replays but we have a nightmare for this athlete misses a spin element so one of the comparatively you know, simple elements that's, that's gone from a score sheet. You know what I love about this skater and I look at skaters as oh, okay if I was coaching which I've coached for 30s what would I do? This is a talent I would want. He skates free. Okay, he's got issues we can, you know, you can work on that. It's not a problem. Keeps good knee bends, covers the ice extremely well, strong back. As we take a look at the Lutz, a little bit too far over, uh, rotated with the upper body. But he wasn't afraid to execute the choreography as designed. Look at the soft knees. Here he hits his toe pick right here. This is my terrible editing. I am humbly apologetic to Daniel, but I saved him from being showing the, the mistake that took the spin out. So maybe a blessing in disguise, but nevertheless, a talent <laughs> that yeah. looks free. Yes. No, he is. He's a gem, uh, you know, he's an unpolished gem. Like mm. he has some wonderful skills that as this young man continues to develop and get a little bit more sophisticated with how he holds his arms and his, and his hands and all that powerful. Great knee bend, good deep edges, powerful off the ice, tight in the air, maybe too tight at the moment, he's over a little bit, but all good things that a coach can work with. So really nice job and nice future and you know certainly lots of work yet to come, but nice, n nicely done. And he had a, a wonderful self-assurance. He seemed comfortable in his own skin and seemed you know, confident in his choice. The Imagine Dragons, the piece, everything seemed like he was, he's on target. He's in, a good place, it seems, just, again, as is the case, Absolutely. not the skate he was hoping yeah. for. Yeah. There are some mistakes, but not necessarily trends. And yeah. So that's what you look for as a coach. If there's a trend of over-rotation or poor position in the air or bad, you know, poor spin positions or whatever, but this young man has very good trends and you know, some really nice things. He's got some polishing to do, no question, but... Yeah, I wasn't expecting that and love the f his commitment to the choreography. As he waits for the score, <laughs> is 46.06 is his personal best. That's the, the hard part that extended fall a little bit short of that with him. Yeah, you, you, you yeah know, exactly. If you've had this skate you don't want and then you've got this long wait, that's what's the challenge to wait in front of the camera. <laughs> and you're going, you're going, oh, rats, they saw it. They saw the mistakes. <laughs> Like, please put me out of but my misery, let me good, know. <laughs> but there's some very good, you know, news with this young man. It's just, this was not his desired day. That's okay, it's part of the process. And the short program scores coming up. 44.96, and that'll put Daniel currently into fifth place. There is a look at your top five skaters on the leaderboard so far in the competition. Our next competitor comes from Poland, Jakub Lofek, 17 years old, third junior Grand Prix season. He was 19th at the World Juniors last year. He's the Polish national senior, fourth place finisher. 60.95 is the personal best at the World Juniors last season. And he's gonna skate to Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers, in California Dream.
Well, what incredible energy from Jakob Lofbeck from Poland. A floaty double axle to start and just oozes conviction and energy to his movement. I was going to say the acceleration is incredible. Like he just powers across the ice, the speed and flow going into the elements. A little bit not 100% in control on some mm. of the jumps today, but he's got power. He's very, uh, uh, some wonderful spins as well. Had a couple trip ups. I think, did he take a fall in the step sequence there? Yeah. Or was I, that a move? <laughs> I, I think it was the, that was some sort of Kevin Emo slide that didn't quite work. And he's it's oh, kind of okay. like he's working on the brink of, you know, brink of brilliance where you're going so, so energetic, but. Look at the knee bend on that double axle and the ice coverage soft on the landing. Much speed going out as he was going in. And pretty good camel spin here. Change of edge. Big circles there. Back camel. Good speed. And this is in change camel spin at level three. Difficult variation near the end here. And as we see this speed coming into the Lutz. And on a lean on the takeoff. Too far for it. Has to take the hand down just to stay up. Here's the triple flip. A little loose in the mm. air, but strong enough to get around. Up into the double toe. Yeah. What a shame. Just. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you have <laughs> he to. He looks up the camera and goes, <laughs> okay. You, he, he's going, you caught me, Mark. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was kind of cool. It was, And that's the thing. He's obviously choosing to do you know, energetic choreography, committed, going for harder transitional content than he could have. But then the result of that is, you know, on the brink of brilliance, sometimes just little wobbles like that. You have to be, to be effective, you've got to push to the edge of disaster, but never over it. And um, that gives you speed, power, and it's exciting, but it, it's risky. And it takes time to learn how to control that. Right? It's a little easier to skate safer, but in the end of the day, you still don't get the scores. You need to train that aggressiveness, if you will. 60.78, even with those mistakes. 60.78 is a good score, and that will put Jakob Lofeka Poland into fourth place. And there you go. It paid off, even with the mistakes. Our next competitor comes from Switzerland, 15-year-old Ian Willer. Coached by Katarina Zanta. This is his first Junior Grand Prix event. He'll skate the Earth Song by Amadeus Electric Quartet.
Well, Ian Wheeler from Switzerland is quite a fascinating young man. He has documented his skating experience and his skating journey on his own website and online. And his passion for the sport just oozes out. And I think, unfortunate that he skated with those big mistakes, but you can see such beautiful skating style. Well, it, he's amazing, really. Over-rotated in the jumps, but the steps were wonderful as we see the over-rotation and too far back on the heel. Same thing on the flip here. Keeps on rotating, doesn't check out early enough and cannot get that free leg back in time. But if he did that, he has wonderful posture. Fine sits spin. There's a cool entry. There's the double axle. And he is aware of the music and everything is designed and choreographed to that. He's executed it as designed. Beautiful camel spin, forward outside edge feature. Change camel spin. That's in at level two at the end of the program. But the quality overall of his skating and his choreography is really wonderful, Mark. Absolutely. And interesting, he started at the age of 10 after a school trip to the ice rink, which in our sport is relatively quite late. So he and his coach, Katharina Zanta, have done an incredible job of cultivating such good quality in that you know, relatively short space of time. And I'm, I'm quite excited about you know, his prospect you can see his disappointment now, but you know we can see beyond two falls and see a, an athlete with great potential. Oh, no question. He has terrific potential, and um, I think that, uh, of course, he'll be disappointed. But he's a 47.91. This is a quality skater, which is yet to be completely polished here. He's learned something from this competition. We will see him again, and he will rise in those standings, I'm most certain. Wonderful quality. Jonas Apostolo from Bulgaria, 13 years old. This is his first Junior Grand Prix event. I love to see all these young skaters. We'll see them for the next four years on the Junior Grand Prix. We'll watch them develop as he skates the short program to This Is The Life.
Ioannis Apostolou from Bulgaria, one of the youngest competitors across all disciplines at this entire event. And for me, it is fascinating because whilst I thought his initial skating skills weren't the strongest and there wasn't the greatest speed, he really impressed me with... There was, I could see glimmers of emotional interpretation for such a youngster and also got a you know, triple loop and a triple loop rotated that I wasn't expecting, so... I, I completely agree with you as you take a look at the loop here that there was uh, an aspect not a huge one but an aspect of maturity really mm. for 13 he's so young and although there's polishing to do in the arms and the posture and all the small details as we look at the lutz that's downgraded but the mechanics and the takeoff pretty good and i was surprised he just doesn't look you, you don't think of him as 13. no And and some good work there in the step sequence. This little, like, little toe hop, the other direction, good use of both directions, little touches, the, the knee action, the glide, the fundamental skating skills, yes, that of course needs work, but you can see yeah, I got a young man who's found, I think, the right sport for him. It's, it appears that way. It appears that he is in his happy place. <laughs> Maybe not now. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, just, it just takes time. Well, when you're that young, you don't really know well what's the process to getting good you yeah. know you, you just think every day you, you don't look at it long term but this young man for the stage he's at that's good he's got lots to work with he's strong you know and you know there are so many attributes necessary to be a successful skater but he's got some good qualities Scores for Jonas, 35.05. That's ninth in the short program so far in the competition. Keep working, young man. You've got certainly some skills under construction. Much more to come. And some experience gained here in this temple. Our next competitor comes from Canada, 17-year-old Terry Utal Jin. First junior Grand Prix event, earning a spot with a good skate at the Next Gen Camp this summer. Seventh at the Junior National Championships. It's coached by Jory Russell. And he'll skate the short program to Il Postino.
Teddy, you tell Jean from Canada. Now, there are not many men that can pull off that delicate music, but I thought Terry did it well as his Canadian cheer squad support him proudly. And Terry's got really a sense of, I don't want to say classic, but he mm. understood the music is delicate and he had a sensitivity to that music. Yeah. He's disappointed, obviously, with the triple flip, triple toe because he doesn't really miss those things. Those are mm. pretty solid jump combinations for him. And that looked okay, the flip, but too far back on the heel on the toe loop. And he comes back down. You watch him bend the waist a little bit on the landing. He wanted to make sure that this didn't go down. You see him bend a little bit forward and make sure he stays on top of the landing foot. But here you see some of the elegance. Spread eagle, both directions, up into the double axle. Amazing body He's got some really nice, beautiful Ina Bauer. And he really does skate with the music, not just to it. And uh, you can sort of see that. But of course, in this sport, on the short program, which is technical, that one element will will hit him pretty big. And it's interesting, I remember last year becoming, or, or becoming increasingly aware and respectful of Joey Russell's work and what a great choreographer he is, and you can see that influence very firmly here. Oh, Joey does great work with all the athletes that he's working across county. He teaches a number of skaters. He comes out here to Vancouver to work in Richmond, 59.98 for Terry Utah Jin. That's fifth in the short program. And he, as you can see, he just said, well, that's not bad, you know, considering he <laughs> took that big fall. And that would have been significantly higher, probably mm. around third place without that fall or even higher. And we'll take a look at the standing so far after the first two groups. And then we'll get the menu for the video <laughs> playback. There it is, Rio Nakata. Japan still in first place by a good chunk. Luka Vick in second, and Elias Sayad of Sweden in third. Mark, what's up well, on the video playback? We, as I said before, we haven't seen enough of Ted Barton, so we're going to get the chance to look at the interview that you, oh my are, God. <laughs> the interviews that you conducted <laughs> uh, of the winners in the men's competition at the previous and the first two Grand Prix. So we'll get a chance to hear from the current leader here and winner of the first event, Rio Nakata, and then to the interview that you had the chance to chat with Adam Hagara, the first Slovakian to win a Junior Grand Prix title. And then a little montage of the highlights from Linz itself. So lots to look forward to before we come back. And Mark, we will be playing your interviews next <laughs> week. <laughs> Not mine. Okay, stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Here in Bangkok, Thailand with the champion of the men's event, Rio Nakata of Japan. What a great opening. A beautiful quad toe and a triple axel after that. How did you feel? I felt so happy and it was a little bit relief because I landed the quad and the box. So. A little bit later in the program, you made a couple small mistakes, but you held it together. Did you think at the end of that program that you had a chance to win the event? Because I landed my quad and my trip box, so I saw a little bit, maybe I can win, but because I had little mistakes, maybe second or first. It was a great program, and I know there's area to work on. What will you do between now and your next Junior Grand Prix? What would you like to improve on? I want to improve on my my stamina. What's your ultimate goal in skating? Obviously, would be the Olympic Games at some point, right? Of course, you have many great Japanese skaters to, that you can, uh, you know, look at and be inspired by. Uh, who's your favorite Japanese skater? Show Mauno. That's a good one, that's for sure. Do you ever get to train with them? Not not that much, but sometimes in the National Training Center, I practice with him. Well, you're a beautiful skater, very successful event here at Bangkok. We wish you the best of luck. Do you know where you will be going next? Istanbul. Wonderful. Well, good luck, and we look forward to seeing you again on the Junior Grand Prix. The champion here in Bangkok, Thailand for the very first time an ISU event held here and the champion, the men's champion, Real Nakata.
hearing the kiss and cry in Linz, Austria, with the men's champion Adam Hagara from from Slovakia. We were all pulling for this to happen. There's no question. And you had to skate last, and there were brilliant performances before you. How did you do that? Well, I concentrated on trying my best. Uh, I tried to do my best. Yeah, I went for the elements. I try to keep my head cold and just go for it. You, you mentioned to me a little earlier that about your family that you wanted to show to your family what you're true and your country what you're truly capable of. Yeah, exactly. I tried everything I could, uh, and it worked. I I trained for this really hard, so I'm really happy about this. Yeah, I know. I've seen you skate. Uh, you've been in seniors as well on the junior circuit, and you're always a great skater, but you always make a little mistake here or there. This was a clean performance under extreme pressure. What did you learn about yourself today? Well, I learned that I shouldn't uh, doubt myself and always go, go for it no matter how I feel. Yeah. Well, it was an incredible skate. We were going to see you in Budapest, is that right? Yeah, that is right. So what will you do between now and then? Well, I will train. Also, the school is starting on Monday, so I'm going to school on Monday. But I will train hard for Budapest and hopefully I can qualify for the Grand Prix final. That will be great. Well, you're sitting in a good position. Hold up your medal for people to see this. The champion here in Linz, Adam Hagara from Slovakia. Thank you. The final day of competition from Linz on the second stop on the Junior Grand Prix Series commenced with the Junior Ice Dance Free Dance and 14 of the 16 teams competing achieved personal best scores in a great event. And it was the unappointed team leader for the American skaters Eliana Peel and her brother Ethan Peel who performed cleanly to their Lord of the Rings Free Dance to secure their first Junior Grand Prix medal on a very proud day for them and their coach and father Robert Peel. The rhythm dance results were maintained too for the new team of Chloe Nguyen and Brenda Yang, who exceeded their training mix success from last week to attain a silver medal and continue the success story for their coaches Megan Wing and Aaron Lowe after their Aspects of Love free dance. The disappointment of being forced to withdraw from the Junior World Championships last season must have paved the way for a very fruitful and hard-working off-season for Daria Grimm and Michael Savitsky who showcased incredible complexity in their transitions and the elements for their new free dance. The German team's quality and maturity secure them another title on the Junior Grand Prix circuit, and we look forward to seeing them compete again in Gdansk on the penultimate stop on this year's Junior Grand Prix series. The men's competition concluded a wonderful week of skating in Austria and history was made alongside some fantastic personal best skates for numerous competitors in the event. America's Beck Strummer delivered a highly emotional and moving free skate in his self-choreographed program that gained him a huge personal best and the bronze medal. Korean success this weekend was added to by Hyung Yong Kim, who was another skater to achieve a personal best free skate in the men's competition. Two triple axles and a quadruple toe loop make him a contender for the Junior Grand Prix final in Beijing this December and we will see him challenge for that spot in Budapest in three weeks time. Slovakia's Adam Hagara made history by becoming not only the first Slovakian skater to win a medal on the Junior Grand Prix series but also to take the title. He had a long and anxious wait as the final competitor of the entire competition but he handled any pressure and expectation with incredible composure. Tears of joy and celebration were shared in the kiss and cry as his sister and coach celebrated this amazing accomplishment for both he and his skating nation to bring to a close a wonderful display of skating from all 110 competitive entries from 33 different skating nations. And we eagerly look forward to the next stop on the series in Istanbul, Turkey next week.
Welcome back to Istanbul. And I think, Ted, that the organizing committee here was aware of the fun and excitement of what took place in Bangkok during resurface because there's been some dancing, there's been music, there's been excitement, and that's all gearing up for a very excited crowd eager to see the third competitor to skate in this group, the Turkish representative. And here we are in group number three. <laughs> you thought you lost me there, eh, Mark? <laughs> and there, Aaron York, who will be the first to skate in this group, but it's not necessarily Aaron that the people in the arena are excited to see. You can hear the screams for Ege Alakan from Turkey. And that's so good when you hear, especially in the same thing we heard in Bangkok when the, you know, the skaters from that club and that area and, and members of the public as well were so excited to see skaters from Thailand competing there at home for the first time ever in the history, having an ISU event. And then the same thing here in Istanbul, uh, to have yes. their skaters. And it's, it helps to build the camaraderie and the excitement mm. and the rest of the club as we see them jumping up and down and waving their flags. <laughs> and then uh, the knock-on impact also is good for the other skaters here because then for them to experience the Junior Grand Prix is one of the biggest events of their skating career thus far, but then to feel that ambience and atmosphere that it heightens the, the sort of, not the enormity because that sounds overwhelming, but the excitement and the, the pride that you should have of being here. Yeah. And then next week in Osaka, of course, that oh building gosh. will be quite packed. <laughs> I remember the skaters going to yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just remembering being at the World Championships in Saitama in March and just being amazed at the respect for skating. It seemed like a, you know the Japanese really do know their skating so incredibly well, and they respected subtleties and nuances that maybe not. You know, audiences around the world would be quite so akin to appreciating. So, I'm very excited for those that get the chance to represent their nation next week. Yeah, and the Japanese audience, of course, so appreciative of all the skaters around the world. Of course, they want their skaters to do well, but they're very respectful mm. and very supportive of all skaters. They just love the sport. And it wasn't always like that. That just goes to show you, no matter what, even what some of these young developing nations in, in the sport of figure skating, they have a future to gain a big audience. It may take time, but it was done in Japan, you know, many, many years ago. But look at the popularity of it now. Yeah. And, you know, I, I keep thinking, and I think we touched on it already, either in our podcast or on one of the Junior Grand Prix streams before, but the, the popularity of our sport has crossed continents and it's ebbed and flowed in different locations. And so that's where it, you know, if the success from a skating nation, that is a huge uh, potential for which to garner and cultivate the popularity of the sport for others in the next generation. So I suppose that in turn only makes us more excited and eager to support these respective skaters so they can go on to successful senior careers as well. Yeah, very true. And you, know, you often hear comments about, oh, well, skating's dying. Well, they because it's in their country that it might be slowing mm -hmm. down a little bit. It is spreading around the world, at least in juniors, for sure. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if we can compare the numbers as it was before, but the point is more nations are being involved, are getting involved, uh, and therefore potentially down the road, um, there will be a greater resource of fans. So, but it takes time. And I, you know, when I think about the culture that so many of the skaters are coming from, they're coming from you know, this TikTok generation or YouTube generation where they have, you know, instant gratification on their devices. And so people don't latch on to anything perhaps as readily. Everybody's into you know, quick source information. But yet what's great to see is that the skaters that we've got here in the Junior Grand Prix, they come from that culture of you know, phones and devices, and yet they've committed their lives to this. And there seems just as much love for the sport from the athletes as there has ever been. Skating is that intoxicating drug that it always has been. Well, this is actually what we do at the Junior Grand Prix here has been very uh, effective with the use of the technology because you can just look up a skater 
and watch their programs on your phone on the bus as you're going to school, whatever yeah. it is, where that access is not always available. Now, it may not have transferred yet into ticket sales or whatnot, but as generations go on, as this audience has more accessibility to watching skating juniors and seniors around the world, I think in time that will help to grow a new audience. But what do I know? <laughs> you never know for sure. Well, we are eternally you optimistic. Just <laughs> yeah, well, you have to be. And we're trying to do the right thing, so we'll see. And the screams. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Really cool to hear that. Uh, and that's what an special. honor for the skater, of course. Yeah. Interesting, the coach on screen, Tamara, mm. she has a, a degree in sports psychology. So if anybody's going to be able to give parting wisdom in the final moments and final seconds, then somebody with a university degree in how to psychologically support another human is, is going to be there. And I spoke briefly with Tamara last, uh, last week in Linz and such a positive, happy person. Mm. And you can see that just with how she communicates with her athletes. And so supportive. Big occasion for this young man. Well, from Great Britain, 16 year old Aaron York, first junior Grand Prix event, fourth in juniors at British Nationals. What an opportunity, what a moment for this young man as he'll skate to the theme from Il Pistino. Great Britain's Aaron York, and I said, asked his coach tomorrow, just in the break, in the resurface, is there anything you would like me to mention? And she just acknowledged, he's such a lovely young man. And I think 
You know, how wonderful, if that's the first thing that you want to be acknowledged about, is the human and what a great human they are. So congratulations, Aaron, on being a great human, and well done on your Junior Grand Prix debut. Well, how wonderful is that, coming from the coach who works tactically with the skater and mm. choreographically, just saying, just such a nice person. As we take a look at the jump combination, had to go, hand went down on the first jump. As we take a look at the Lutz, much better. A little bit on lean, but keeps the hand off the ice. What I loved is some small nuances, not afraid to lift the head and to have work with the choreography to the music. There's a great leg lift there. The head went up with the arms. Those are small details that may not seem important, but for the development of an athlete, they're critical because you're going to need every detail as you move into seniors. Mm, completely. And they acknowledge that he has had a bit of a knee injury, which has affected him being able to attain some of the higher levels in the spin. So we've got a flying set at level one and change cam at level two. So that's something that they're conscious of. But I think, you know, they're not, you know, any good coach is really not too fixated on the score if there is a bit of an awareness of a long-term athlete development. So she says that she believes that he's capable of much more moving forward. And then this is just an experience to lead towards the greater stuff. Yeah. That's what the juniors are. An opportunity. 49.02. As Aaron sort of tilted his head. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. That's not bad. That's sixth position at this point in the competition. Well done. You can see some nice qualities with this young man. Quite often, skaters just measure their success based on an element, on a technical element, and not a whole. Our next competitor comes from Estonia, Igor Artsenko, 17 years old, second junior Grand Prix season. He was 31st at the World Juniors fourth in the Estonian Senior National Championship. 55.58 is personal best last year at Junior Worlds. I'd love to beat that score here right now as he will skate to Keeping Me Alive by Jonathan Roy.
but a really challenging skate for Yegor Marcinko. The mistakes on the flip, then the mistake on the loose, and finally the mistake on the final spin. But I actually think if He's a very interesting character, and he's picked music, this Keeping Me Alive by Jonathan Roy, which was so perfect for him. There was good musicality, but as we know only too well, the jump elements and the technical elements are imperative as we hear the crowd go crazy for the next skater. Well, this young man certainly got some skills, there's no question of that. And this was not his day. You can see good knees, a little loose in the air, too much on the side and a little bit too far forward, but is he capable? Absolutely, he does these elements probably all the time in, in practice. And Lutz picks too early, pops that open. Timing of your pick has got to be on the way up. And, and he'll be disappointed with this performance for sure. Yeah, and this is where the coach and choreographer Katarina have to work so hard because they can see his potential as we can. It's now making sure that they can turn the inevitable, understandable frustrations into something positive within 48 hours before the men's free skate on Saturday. <laughs> Confirmation of the mental, psychological aspect of the sport because the choreographer and the coach and the skater have all done a really good job. You just can't prepare as readily in practice for the pressure of competition because that run through might have happened in practice but you wouldn't think anything of it but here the flying sit spin becomes an enormous deal because that's an easy mistake that he would perhaps not have made in practice in order to be well uh, seasoned for seniors you have to have faced every scenario that happens unexpected scenarios and you only do that by competing and you have to compete a lot and so you know, it's not just the Junior Grand Prix, you only get two of those competitions, unless you make the final. It's it's the other international, it's the other national competitions. You've got to learn how to compete, and that will just take time. But when you're here, in your mind, at the big show, you want to be your best, <laughs> yeah. and that's what's always disappointing. 42.71 for Yegar, that's 10th in the short program. Good to see him respect that and acknowledge the score. Oh, here we go. Representing to Takeda. Hey, get Elder. Hello, Khan. Pardon me. Nervous and inspiring moment for this young man in front of friends and family.
What an occasion for Egg Alakan. Just you know, wonderful scenes here at the Junior Grand Prix to see that level of support for a local skater on the junior stage and just something that you hope he can savor and remember forever. And he, I actually believe, although there were mistakes, he coped incredibly well with the level of pressure because you can see even now the things being thrown on the eyes, the, the volume of the crowd, something that he could never have anticipated or prepared for. And he didn't let that affect him adversely. He seemed to really manage that level of pressure. No, and as much as it's important for him as well, it's important for all those skaters in the stands cheering him on. That's your next generation of young skaters in Turkey. And he needs to and wanted to inspire them. And had a really good skate. Beautiful triple loop, double toe loop combination. And double axle a little bit later on in the program. Second to last element. Good lift in the air. And change combination has been right at the end here. Level three, taking in 3.26 points for that last element. And interestingly, as we see a busy kiss and cry. Iggy's, yeah, a busy one. Yeah, his ISU Biox says that he trains just six hours per week in Istanbul, which isn't a huge amount. So then to be able to land that triple loop double toe as comfortably as he did on that relatively limited training time is real respect to the coaches and staff that he's got in the case of Cry for doing such a good job in the limited time. Yeah. Yeah, really great job. Well, here we have some fun in the Kiss and Cry now. Yes. Yeah, that's fantastic. This is so good for building young skaters in the audience, watching online. I want to be part of this. Yes. Then they go back to the rink and they start to get motivated. This is so important. You don't see any of that result quickly and overnight. It takes years, but it's so important to witness, and we've seen it here. 47.74, and that will put him currently in the eighth place. <laughs> <laughs> little pat on the head there. <laughs> Everybody's <job>. happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our next competitor comes from Georgia. 15-year-old Konstantin Supatashvili. 59.38, personal best of the World Juniors last year. 18th at that competition. And he'll skate the short program to Gravity of Love.
Well, perhaps inspired by his compatriots, Metalkina and Biralava, who won the pair short program. Konstantin Supertashvili delivers in his short program successfully to a skater who's used to winning in this arena. He won the Bosphorus Cup in Istanbul last year, so has a good association with skating in Turkey. And again, delivering here in the short program. This young man just explodes off the ice on mm. his takeoffs. The lift is phenomenal. I'm sure quads are very much on the future menu as we take a look at the double axle. And that's nice, it's good. You can stretch the three legs straight in the back. But watch the lift off this pit toe pick straight up in the air. Great air time all the way around. Good check out, nice smooth landing. Just really excellent quality. And here's the triple flip. Great timing with the pick on the way up. And then pushes up for the triple toe loop. Nicely done. Good 10.22 for that one element. It's a really good save there. And another good save. So showing some yeah. experience. He's, a, he's an athlete. He knows where he is in the air. And if it's a little off a bit, he can adjust quick. And a little save there as well. Yeah, it worked hard. You can see the construction and consideration in the program, putting the jump combination in the second half to get that extra 10%. There's somebody that's obviously mindful of you know, the desire to climb the, the junior world rankings from 18th, as you said. He was 22nd in 2022, moved up four spots earlier this year. He'll be vying for a top 10 placement, I'm sure. Sure, program scored, Constantine. 61.28, that's a pretty good score, and that will move him currently into fourth place at this stage of the competition. And there is a look at your top five on the leaderboard so far. One more skater in this group. From Switzerland, 16-year-old Aurelien Chive. First Junior Grand Prix event. It's an exciting moment. He's had the excitement of the fans in the building. And he'll finish out this group as he skates to Dead to Me.
Aurelien Cherbe from Switzerland and what an interesting skater and he's been working with the same choreographer for seven or eight years Ted and his choreographer Pierre-Louis Bouquet was a very creative French ice dancer himself and you can see that relationship allowing this 16 year old to experiment with different body movement different ideas some cool work yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you said that because that's what I was thinking. I'm going, there's something unique and different about this young man. He skates free and open in his own style. There's work to do in refinement, perhaps, but you don't want it to have it so refined that it's not individual. And I think this young man has his own individual style, and I think much more to come in the future. I captured all this beginning because this had concept behind it. This movement wasn't without purpose. and. The judges want that developed idea as we see the triple toe, triple toe. And watch the timing. That pick goes in just a little bit too early. And the upper body passes the legs too far back on the landing. Nice camel spin. Look at the speed for it. Outside edge. Wonderful speed. Jumps over to the back camel. It's a difficult position there. That is a change camel spin. Level three, so missing just one of the features. Look at that, Ina Barrett right up into the double axle. And you can see, even though he was a little bit off in the landing, he has the quickness to adapt and adjust. He's an athlete, for sure, and he has some uniqueness to his style. Mm. And, you know, despite the creativity, you can see he's still going to reference the jumps. You can see him simulating the takeoff, oh, yeah. and that's something that, you know, all the skaters will do is they greeted by their coach yeah i don't think that changes especially with the man they're going yes no one's gonna go oh well i don't care about the jumps that i missed <laughs> i i think i did great choreography right exactly. nobody's gonna do that you know at this stage we're really pretty much at any stage 55.66 and that will put this young man currently in the seventh place good job fun to watch mm. bright future well, group number four taking to the ice for their six minute warm up. And we've got a little Japanese skater, Canadian, American, Danish, French, and Korean. So this could be a pretty good group here. Yeah, you wouldn't be surprised if those flags were beside you know, the top group in their free skate. Obviously, they've got to deliver. <laughs> so I think uh, it's interesting. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. Oh, well, I was just going to suggest, Ted, that we hear from more of the skaters around the globe and just see if they have any questions for us. Just reminding everybody that they can feel free to contact us and post some questions to us. We'd love to hear from everybody. We're going to have to start begging pretty soon because nobody mm. seems to answer that. We should. We should. I would love to. I, I would love to know, as you've asked, you know, some of the young, we know that young skaters who are either on the Junior Grand Prix or would like to be on it are watching. Mm. So we'd love to know what your thoughts are, where you're at. You know, what do you like about the Junior Grand Prix? Who's your favorite skater that you've seen so far? You know, get engaged, get involved, and we hope to see you on the Junior Grand Prix at some point as well. Let us know where you skate, mm. what level you're at. And we'll give a mention on the warm-ups to the broadcast. You can sense the energy of these skaters in this group. You can sense that these are more experienced, perhaps, as a generalization across the group. And you can feel that hunger almost to try and close in on the, the leading scores. Rio Nakata, first skater out, still leads the field by over, well, over eight and a half points at this stage. 12 to go. Here is that Canadian David Bondar, which is really interesting. He had. I think it was last year. Might have, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. He just he's a good skater, but he had just really, you know, very difficult skates. But mm -hmm. he's working with Lee Barkel. He's getting his consistency back. Hopefully he has a good skate here. We'll see what happens. It's a process. You can be a great skater and lose, you know, a good percentage of that in competition mm -hmm. under the stress. And that is another skill one has to learn. And interesting to see Ming the final skater in this group. He had some successes last 
season on the Junior Grand Prix and will be able to replicate that. And as we've said before, if, if this skater has enjoyed success in a previous season, then it does change the dynamic and the perspective sometimes. It comes with a whole different energy as we see him doing comfortable triple loops. Yeah, your, your expectation goes up, of course. You're going, well, okay, I can't go lower than what <laughs> I was. I want to get up. I want to go higher. But a whole new crew comes in. <laughs> and for Mikyusio, you, the, the challenge I'm sure for him will be to as to whether or not he's ready to put the triple axel into his, his program and competitive performances. And there's no doubt that, you know, I think particularly for this group, many of them will have been working on the ultra C's, the triple axel and the quads in the off season. But each coach has a different philosophy as to what's the sufficient ratio of success before it's considered to put in the program. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you just have to get it out there. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not on the success, you need them to feel, have one experience under uh, pressure, a little bit more pressure in competition to see how does it change their timing? You know, do they rush it? Do they mm -hmm. take too long? Do they, what happens? Because the rhythm and the timing in practice, and the rhythm and timing in competition usually is different it's along the way as we see American <laughs> well, team. Look. Luke, uh, last week, found a, a clip from the YouTube feed of us um, acknowledging his uh, cheerleading abilities. Oh, did he really? And then Andy Deng, who is with him, the other American pair team, I said, oh, you know, we'll be looking to see how the North American cheerleading teams compare. And he said, oh, don't worry, we've got this. So obviously they, they know <laughs> that, you know, this is a prerequisite now part of the event is to make sure that your cheerleading capabilities live up to your skating abilities. I I do think they're in the lead at the moment. I do. Yeah, it's they've certainly shown great camaraderie and enthusiasm and support for their teammates. Very, very brief. I'm very big of you, Ted, as a Canadian to acknowledge that. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a challenge for our team. You know, like, you know <laughs> come on, guys, let's get out there. I know Andre <laughs> bought some big flags to wear, and and I think you'll see that as the team moves on into the Junior Grand Prix as we take a look at some of the skaters warming up and it's just that exactly you can have a disastrous warm-up and a great skate or vice versa a great warm-up and disastrous skate I, I wonder Ted if the relatively recent inclusion of the team event and figure skating at Winter Olympic Games has you know created that increased teamwork essence and vibe here on the Junior Grand Prix or perhaps you've always been aware of that more so than at seniors Oh, yeah, I think the juniors have always had that naturally. Um, it's a little bit more, I, I don't know if this is the right word, a little bit more of an intimate uh, mm -hmm. um, community in, the, in, in so much as they travel together. It's their first experience. They're all excited. Uh, they've got good team leaders helping to guide them along the way. So the experience is completely different. And, and they're not like, oh, I really need to get my rest. I mean, yeah. you know, they've got nothing else to do but go to the rink and cheer their, you know, their, their colleagues on. So... There seems to be, a, they gravitate, a bigger team will gravitate to providing that type of support. Why? Because it's fun too. Mm. Great for them to, to relish the fun because it's, it can be stressful too. Representing your nation has a responsibility attached to it. And so good that they get the chance to have some fun alongside the pressure. Oh, but I think that's the key for mm. this. If they have fun doing it, then the pressure is less mm. or it, it comes in a different form. Making them so want to return. I think the team. Yeah. And here we go. Group number four. There are five groups in the men's short program. We'll have a nice resurfacing after this group. And our first competitor comes from Canada, 16-year-old David Bondar, second junior Grand Prix season. He was 13th at the Canadian Junior National Championships as coached by Lee Barkel and Jeffrey Buttle. 40.82. That was his personal best last season. I think you'll see, hopefully see him. Bigger score now, it's certainly made great improvement in the last year as he will skate the short program to Acceleration's Walls.
Well, if I hadn't had some context from you, Ted, I would have wondered why the results for David Bondar from Canada on his ISU biography are as low as they are. But you can see that so much potential and so much uh, maturity, great work from the coaches and the choreographers in creating this skater, but still some yeah. fragility. Yeah, and, and while well, you know, I mean, before it would be two or three mistakes in this. The skater, you know, David would get a little bit, I don't know, but nervous, but insecure when he competed, but he's much more organized as we see the triple axel. Great right down to the knees, off the end of the edge. Good, that's on the quarter. No, that's under rotated, but the system, but he stood up on it. That was good. And you can see more patience in the choreography, more sort of a systematic approach. Before he would lose the confidence and lose the control of the muscles. There's the triple flip, triple toe loop. That was nicely done. And I was so hoping to have my fingers crossed on the triple lots to get a somewhat of a really clean program. I just rushed a little bit on a lean. But this is a big improvement for this skater we, as we see him taking the time to take the deep edges and the turns. And progress continues to be made every time out for this young man in chase of that elusive clean program, which he's completely capable of doing. And great for him here to have his coach Lee and, and choreographer Yuri Straskalayev here to support him. Great for him to know you're, you know you're respected, you're supported. There's a team of people that believe in you. You can see him shaking his head. You can see perhaps that consistent, you know, downward psychology for him, but. Hopefully, heating this, heating all the people in Skate Canada that respect him and believe in him will help him finally to, to deliver that skate that's fulfilling his potential. Yeah, it's just him gaining his own confidence. And that is always a bit of a challenge, but 60.30, and you can see he nods, he's going, oh, okay, even a smile. Because he didn't expect that. That young man is a demonstration of the quality of what you've improved and how you're getting better every time out, even though you're a little disappointed. Good job. More to come. From the United States, 17-year-old Kai Kobar, third Junior Grand Prix season, 18th at the World Juniors, and U.S. National Champion, coached by Tammy Campbell. 69.11 top score in the short program from last season on the Junior Grand Prix. He'll skate the short to Uprising by Muse.
Well, I think possibly the first level four step sequence we've seen and a level four step sequence to me is such a great benchmark for the quality of the skater and also, to be fair, the quality of the choreographer in, in creating such a brilliant piece. But despite his obvious brilliance, Kai Kavar will be you know, really frustrated with the three jumping mistakes. Yeah, no question. This, this young man is a really wonderful skater, fabulous qualities all the way through. But this is a technical program, three jumping passes. You need them, you need them all. And you might get away with a small mistake with the qualities this young man has, but three big ones, there's the triple axle, slips off on an angle on that takeoff edge. The takeoff edge slipped away from his body, main body core. Then the triple lutz and looked to have it, but didn't get the free leg back and started to sort of break at the waist. And this timing pops this open to a single. And all three elements huge scores, huge points lost on those three elements. And maybe like David Bondar from Canada, you know, this was the American Junior Champion in 2022, so perhaps some just inconsistency in showcasing his brilliance, but he spends half the time with Tammy and half the time with his parents, Karel and Amanda Kavar, who have obviously created passionately and enthusiastically a brilliant skater. Just that's when you want them to hear. You want them to hear, we can see beyond what the judges have to give you. The judges have to give you a low score here because of what you delivered, but you could be leading the field potentially based on the quality you've shown. Absolutely, yeah. It has incredible quality. Just needs to put it all together. That's part of the process, part of the journey. 52.54, that's ninth for Kai Kovar, and that's missing three elements, so that says a lot. But it's sport, and you have to deliver. Yeah, it's all there, yet to be discovered in competition. Our next competitor comes from Denmark, 15-year-old Wendell Hansen Ostergaard. And this is his very first Junior Grand Prix event. And he'll skate the short program to Human by Ragged Bowman.
Well, Wendell, Hansen Arstegard from Denmark has an ice rink that closes on the 31st of March mm. and it only recently reopened. And, you know, that an indication of the challenges, although they have summer camps that they attend and travel to, that an indication of the different, you know, environments the skaters come from. But despite the lack of training time, just like his sister, Babeth Hansen Arstegard, who competed last year, so much vitality, creativity, ingenuity, and potential, especially on such limited time. Yeah, I looked at that as well. Just three hours a week in the off season, that is not enough to get gain the confidence and comfort that you have. But it, it, if it's what you have, this is brilliant work that they're doing mm -hmm. with those limited resources. And so, and that's all you can do. Yeah. And you can see that he loves to skate. That's not a question. And exploring the possibilities requires time because the sport isn't easy to do. It's extremely difficult. So you need the time on the ice in training to discover and to experiment, to find who you are as a skater and how to do all these difficult elements. And I think this young man did a great job for yeah. the limited time he gets in training. And to think that they've obviously created creativity and he's got, you know, unique, there was, I didn't catch it, unfortunately, but there's some unique movement within the step sequence. There was, you know, an energy that showcases that they must prioritize a bit of that creativity as he guzzles that water. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, when, when potentially another coach might say, oh no, let's just prioritize jump, 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 jump. So I respect the fact that his mother and his coach gives the, the breathing room and the time to pursue, you know, the, the right brain creativity as well as the, the left brain logical tech stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's such a mystery and a challenge and you can see the work being done in the Kiss and Cry 37.38 and now his disappointment will have to be turned around into our next opportunity, which is the free program and let's see what we can do with that. I've been there too many times. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> when, when I was a skater, just staring into space going, uh, oh, no, not again. You do recover, and you do get motivated, that's for sure. Our next competitor comes from Japan, Daya Ibahara. 15 years old. This is his first Junior Grand Prix event. We'll see what this young man has to offer as he'll skate the short program to a dude for a dreamer by Jennifer Thomas.
Well, I think what's particularly impressive about the short program here from Dea Ebihara from Japan is having seen him had a fall on the triple axel on warm-up and then knowing that this is an element which was only added to his programs in April of this year, so it's relatively new. He's made mistakes on it here just moments ago in warm-up and yet opens the program here with a glorious one. As I watched him skate, I just thought, oh my gosh, I just have never really seen a weak Japanese skater. Maybe they don't always skate their best. Okay, different issue. But just the basic skating skills and, and the technique is so strong. There's the triple axel. Gets the free leg back in time to glide. Nice triple flip. Reloads. Patient and holds that position in between the two jumps and squeaks that free leg out. Nice save on that. Triple Lutz. That just soared mm -hmm. off the ice glide at a, on a soft knee. Beautiful quality. And what was really nice see, there to see Rio Nakata, his you know, colleague, yeah. competitor, compatriot, cheering him on. And the, you know, the reality is knowing that he's probably going to lose his lead now to his friend, but competitor. Well, it'll be interesting to see. The top score is 73.56. He'll need to top that, but he might with that program. And that's the value when you have that many skaters at that level. They push each other. Mm. And those young Japanese skaters who want to represent their country with all that sponsorship on their jackets, mm. look at this and say, okay, that's what I have to do. I'll figure that one out. And they go about it. And, and the talent pool is huge. Yeah. And I think comparative between he and the first case of six ice, Rio Nakata, probably program component scores better for Rio, but harder combination here and obviously not mis mistaking the triple axel so i think the lead will be theirs yes yeah i agree well there it is yeah 76.10 and that puts <laughs> Gaya Bahara into first place and you can see the reaction by the coach <laughs> and the skater <laughs> wow Our next Gianni. competitor comes from France, Gianni Motilla, 16 years old, first Junior Grand Prix event as well, coached by Malika Tahir. I love it when these skaters, we haven't seen them before, and he'll skate the short to Nothing Else Matters.
Well, as you so rightly pointed, Ted, these French skaters, they do have unique movement patterns. And that spin, I think change camel spin, was unique, fast, speedy, and memorable. So kudos to Gianni Motia from France on his junior Grand Prix debut. <laughs> He's got lots of energy, great athleticism. There's the double axle. Look how he soared off the ice into the air. Here's the triple nuts. Huge lift, too mm -hmm. far forward of the landing. Maybe a bit bigger than he normally does, and so that's hard to handle. Look at that spin. Camel change camel. That's in at a level three with a plus GOE. So he's a 3.24 cool exit as well. Here's the triple toe loop right up into the double toe. Lots of ability yet to be, or continued to be, developed and polished. But uh, impressive to be able to skate under the pressure because you can't find many results internationally from Gianni, and yet here he is in Istanbul, Junior Grand Prix, and manages to withstand the pressure and deliver under that. And I think the reaction to drinking of the waters we've seen from other competitors is indication that it is humid here and it, that does make it more challenging to get through the, the run-throughs as well so coping with lots of factors like a pro you know and, but i think some of these skaters come in with a different attitude they, it doesn't bother them because they haven't really experienced that yet and they're excited to show what they can do and some people come in nervous wanting to show what they can do it all depends on the approach now maybe that'll change in time i don't know <laughs> But he didn't look really nervous or uptight at all. 53.49 for Gianni, and that'll put him currently in the 10th place. Nice job. Nice skater. Our final competitor in this group comes from Korea. 14-year-old Minku Seo. The fourth and the third last year in the Junior Grand Prix was fifth in Bangkok in week one. Korean national senior bronze medalist. 74.39 is personal best. He earned that in the, in the short program last season on the Junior Grand Prix. Boy, would he ever love that score right now as he'll skate the short to Flower Dance.
It's O M G. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hard to believe that this is a 14-year-old. Oh, uh, you know what? This young skater weaves and carves his way so beautifully from one element to another. Beautiful upper body movement in control of every single move. Mm. It's just exquisite, incredible. And it, you know, we can see in his biography that he has worked with Patrick Chan, and you can see that influence upon the skating skills that he has. And I, I, kudos to obviously Patrick, who's a legend of the sport and of the blade, but also his mother, who's his coach. You know, he started at the age of four. His mother's his coach, and she will have worked so passionately to create that level of quality. Yeah, and also the level of passion in his skating, because you can be a really good skater, but not skate passionately. He mm. does. Yeah. He cares about every movement. Here's the triple flip. Really patient, carries the momentum right up over the pick into the triple toe loop. He does the same thing here, carries the momentum back up over the pick. Little bit of a lean, but he hangs on really nicely, calm. This double axle sails across the ice. Look at the flow in the landing. Wow. That's special. That is special. And so he's a 74.39 mark for a personal best. We'll yeah. see whether he can beat that here. He needed a 76.11 to take the lead. We'll find out. And, and, you know, doesn't have the triple axle, but the, great to see that despite that lower base value, judges pushing the highest skating skills component scores into the system, and rightly so. I just, now, <laughs> this is mom's just making sure he looks presentable. <laughs> And he's in the 70, he's in the sevens for the PCs, mm. which he should be. Season's <laughs> best, 75.67. You can see the expression on all their faces like, whoa. Okay, that's second, but that's close. <laughs> and there are the standings with one more group to come. Boy, some great skating. Seen those flags before. We'll take a look at the standing so far. There are six skaters yet to come. And there it is. Uh, Rio Nakata Top came from third. The 70s. He came from third after the yeah. short program in his first assignment and managed to still win the title. He may have to do the same, big free skate for him. As you see the standings lower down. Exactly. Well, six skaters more to come after the ice resurfacing. Mark, what is on the playlist with videos? So stay tuned to see the wonderful Victor Pfeiffer, an Austrian skating champion who was coaching mm -hmm. in Austria last week uh, with his Beck Stromer student. A great opportunity to see the insight into his coaching. And then a day in the life with technical controller Ingrid Walter and a chance to see an insight into what goes on on the technical panel before finally uh, peek into World Ice Skating Day, the initiative that was created for last year and will happen again this year on the 3rd of December. And this is the first time ever that they've done a day in the life of a technical controller, so enjoy that. We'll be back right after this. Huh? Are you Mike Dunbar? No. Uh -oh. You're still safe. No, I am mic'd up. You can say hi to our friends. Don't say it now. You're now being recorded. 11.47. No, one more minute. One minute. Don't do it yet. I would always love to watch skaters in, on TV, and then I would always turn it on in the locker room at Worlds and stuff, on Eurosport, and they would just turn it off, and I would keep turning it. Did I tell you that yet? Do you like watching? Um, sort of. Yeah. Sort of. A little bit, and then just stop and focus. Well, I'll have to go down and tell Thomas that it's not six minutes warm up, <laughs> correct his grammar. <laughs> and then the quick hops with the uh, check. Yeah, thank you. I love yours too. Yeah. And then every time you hold the landing position, breathe out, relax, reset. You can do that. And keep attacking, enjoy it, free of concern, that's it. Yeah. A little bit of breathless event. Just in a controlled way, I love it. And do a beautiful landing position. Yes. Point, 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 finish it up. Make sure it's more than eight, nine, ten. So count to 30. No, I was just watching you in practice and I was like, that's a man who loves his job. 
Yeah, I know. I get a little or, into it when they skate, though. I kind of move. A little bit. <laughs> I still sometimes have more faith in my students skating than my own. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Breathe out, relax after your elements. Okay. I'll see you down there. Yeah. It was funny when the little kids were plugging the holes in the middle of the rink. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't think people do lutzes and flips there. Yeah. <laughs> now it's perfect. And confident. Yeah. And a sassy person. Person, sassy buddy. Exactly. But fight. Sassy person, that was a good save. Keeping it PG. Light call up. You got it. I held it. <laughs> you did more than six on the count. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. So Thank you. Great. Nice performance. Great save on the flying set, actually. Yes. Oh, this way? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> So close to 70. That's good, it's a personal best. Yeah, that is a personal best. You know what it is? This is way too high. <laughs> right? I think so. Like, I, I look like a toddler sitting here. <laughs> You're not sure we're perfectly normal. Yeah, okay. I wasn't so sure yesterday either. <laughs> After the event. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Ingrid Charlotte Walter. I'm an ISU technical controller for ice stones and an ISU referee for ice stone singles in pairs. And my job here in the Junior Grand Prix in Linz is the technical controller for ice stones. So we are here sitting together, the so-called technical panel. Um, we have the job of looking at the elements, all the couples, dance couples have in their program and in finding out what kind of features they do because the elements themselves can be made more difficult and get a higher value by having more and difficult features. Exit. I question the split. Yes, question mark, no. So this is a lot of material one has to take in very, very quickly. And that is why we sit in the practice time and try to find and see what they are doing. We write that down in a kind of shorthand, which every person devises for him or herself. For instance, I draw a lot. You can see that later on on the sheets we have, um, whereas others just do it in numbers, which frightens me, I couldn't do that. But there are number people, so that would be fine for them. And when it comes to the competition, we transfer the elements and the features onto the competition sheet. Of course, no level at all, because we have to see what of what could be there is really performed. And that is then what we mark down. But it speeds up everything very quickly. Usually we have two technical specialists. These are my two colleagues, Roxanne and Helen. And the one calls mainly the men and the other mainly the woman. And if we have, for instance, a spin in which both are involved, it is the specialist one who does the call of the level. Um, also to the team, belong the data operator. He puts in the levels and the elements we call into the program and the um, software so that the judges on their judges stand get the elements in the right order on their screen because they have to evaluate the quality. And we have a video cutter of course because we have one whole program of three to four minutes and we just need the little clips which are also used to review by the judges and by us, whatever is shown. And so the video cutter cuts as soon as we say this element is coming up. That is one of the technical specialists always says next element and then the element they know 
they can prepare what they have to cut and then the specialist one says the element when it starts. As soon as the program is finished, again, the data gives us the number of elements, also on which we called a review. A review is something we call when we are not quite sure whether it was really seen. What we saw, for instance, we have two people on the ice and in a step sequence, one of them could well hide the steps of the other by just being there, obviously. So then we would need, as an example, a review to see whether we can really have a look at the other steps. If not, we go with what we have seen and go always with the skater. I think that completes the whole process. I'm afraid it was more than three sentences. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we can cut. We are here to celebrate the first inaugural World Ice Skating Day. And World Ice Skating Day is a single day specifically to celebrate the fun and the joy of ice skating across the globe. Lots of fun, lots of smiles, and a great way to celebrate this first day of World Ice Skating.
Well, after a long and exciting day of skating, we get to the final group of competitors taking to the ice, and the reaction here will be one of celebration as the final two competitors to take to the ice will be representing the home nation. And Mr. Ted Barton has worked tirelessly, I think, through the night, <laughs> and we've got there to the last group, Ted. I'm, I'm, and I'm wide awake now because <laughs> it's like 11.30 in the morning here. It's bright out. Yeah. You're no. going to day three of, of, fist, of skating celebrations. Uh, it's always a lot of fun working with you, Mark, so it keeps me going. keeps me <laughs> awake, that's for sure. Well, and, of course, I love following the juniors. Absolutely. And, and talking of that, we'll be able to see the Junior Grand Prix assignments coming up. So we've already got to Istanbul, third stop. Portugal. Yeah, we move on to Osaka. Both uh, will be covering that remotely. I'll move on to Budapest uh, on site. And of course, Mark will join me from home. And then we will both be in Gdansk and Yarvin. I think we'll have some special items for you there. We'll have a lot of fun being live at those events. Uh, and then the Junior Grand Prix final will, will take place in Beijing, China, along with the Senior Grand Prix final. December 7th to 10th. And we'll see if we can take a look at the Senior Grand Prix Series coming up. There it is. Skate America will start October 20, 22nd in Allen, Texas. It'll move up north to my hometown here in Vancouver, Skate Canada International. And then in November 3rd to 5th, Grand Prix de France in Angers. And then the Cup of China will go to Chong going in, in China at November 10th to 12th. Grand Prix Espo. November 17th to 19th, and the NHK Trophy in Osaka, Japan, November 24th to 26th. And as I mentioned, the Grand Prix Final would take place in Beijing, December 7th to 10th. There's a look at the schedule, and of course they will have, later on we'll show you tomorrow, the schedule for the ISU Championships. So it seems like we're really in the midst of the figure skating calendar, but when we see the lineup, we can realize that still early days for the competitors as so many of those that are competing here, as we see a comfortable looking triple flip, triple toe, will be hoping to culminate their season at the Junior World Championships. That the real highlight pinnacle in the calendar for those competitors that aren't on the senior circuit. Yeah, it does seem well. We've done three weeks already, but this is just the early stages of this year. Junior Grand Prix, Senior Grand Prix, Senior B competitions around the world, and then, of course, the ISU Championships as well, let alone synchro competitions as well. So it's a busy, busy season for the ISU. They do such a good job, and I think some of the Senior Bs are starting to get Lombardia trophies starting the Autumn Classics coming up, so never home trophy mm. not long, so so much to keep skating fans entertained throughout the season. Next next week in Montreal, uh, Skate Canada, uh, SCI, uh, not SCI, pardon me, Autumn Classic will take place, and the field of skaters is remarkable. We have the Paris Champions of the World, we have the Women's Champion of the World, you won't, won't want to miss that. You can see that streaming through skatecanada.ca and that's going to be quite an event quite a full field just like a senior grand prix event it's amazing i always think it's so fascinating to see how the skaters can improve mid-season so much of the mm. technical enhancements and our advancements are done in the off season and then it's maintenance and program fitness during the season but there are some that really make huge strides from event to event within the competition calendar that's just gaining confidence. They may be well trained and fit and feeling comfortable, and then they get in competition because what they do in practice, what they do in competitions can be vastly different. We can say, yeah, they're maybe not skating well. They could be brilliant in practice session and just a little bit off in competition. So we'll see as the year progresses, you usually have your best competition with the best skates at the World Championships that will take place, of course, March 18th to 24th in Montreal. You know, it's great to see so many cheering on there. The, ooh, ooh. That was not fun. That was, I was just about to say, Kirill Mazar's birthday today. He doesn't want to get injured and doesn't want to be involved in a mistake. We wish him all the very best today on his birthday. And it's a high pressure birthday when you spent the whole day waiting till 
you know, at 9, 10 yeah. o'clock at night to compete. <laughs> so, as, as we all said in the stands, that the highest finishing Turkish skater is still here, Sena Lydia Berak Toroglu. I saw her in the stands here to support her compatriots, and that's just so, so wonderful to see. And I'm sure they are as excited, in fact, maybe more exciting now that she's competed and concluded her short program already. She can relax a little bit now and just enjoy being part of this amazing cheer squad that's yeah. sounding like and a When you're young, when you're young and you have your friends competing at the same time, it's so much fun. It's a thrill to be part of. And I think they don't want to miss any second of all that. <laughs> Beautiful camel spin with the turned out free leg. Oh, wow. I was going to say, I think that the the system has made camel spins in the men's discipline immeasurably better. Forcing the <laughs> men to have yeah. a suitably high free leg has really forced flexibility improvements in many. Yeah, that's for sure. And they now see themselves on the screen. <laughs> festive atmosphere here it really in is. the arena as they clear the ice as we get going on the final group group number five in the men's short program and there he is our first competitor 17 year old Nikita Kivu Sheriff from Kazakhstan. This is his first Junior Grand Prix event. Ilya Klimton, one of the coaches, remember his skating yeah. so innovative and unique. And he'll skate, I'll never forget you. Challenging skate for Nikita Krivoshiev 
from Kazakhstan. A couple of mistakes, and I, I, I'm sure there are nerves that have a, a big factor in the part to play, but just a little bit wild on the takeoffs, and that's so much harder to control when the legs don't always feel like you're own under this kind of pressure. And being able to get it back in the program is really hard. As we can see, the opening element too far back under the heel, coming down for the Lutz. <laughs> and again, a little bit off center, of course. Doesn't have all the weight right on top of the landing foot. So that's another disappointment. And you're carrying that with you as you move forward through the program. What an incredible back element. That's mm. amazing. Here's the double axle, which should be just an, an easy element for this young man. Just whips it around the corner and over rotates has to step out. So I think that this is a much better skater than what he has displayed here in competition. And just one of those days at the office just didn't go well. And again, another skater in their first Junior Grand Prix assignment. So, and you know, as you mentioned, Ilya Klimkin, I remember Ilya Klimkin actually stayed at my home. He came to the skate camp in Scotland and we put him up for a week. So. I remember him well, and what a great influence of creativity and, and quad ability yeah. for him. So he's yeah. got good influence. He was, am he was amazing. Just very, very innovative and always exploring what he could do on the ice, other than the technical jumps, which you have to do, but mm. in choreography, yeah. But no matter that input and that influence, great though that is, you know, the skaters do have to experience it for themselves. and. You know, there's nothing more poignant. You know, it, it's like parenting. You can tell a child what to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they will do it. Now Nikita will have further experiences of his very own to carry on forward to compete and represent Kazakhstan again. Yes. Question is, how quickly can he process those feelings, those emotions, those experiences? The men all have a day off tomorrow, so Let's see if he can use that. And that's a challenge, and that's the learning ground as well. 45.12 for Nikita. That's 17th in the short program. Our next competitor comes from Latvia. Federic Kulish, 18 years old. 50.82 is personal best from two years ago, 2021. We didn't see him on the Junior Grand Prix last season. He'll skate to X Genesis Symphony Part 2 by Muse.
Well, that's interesting, Ted, because for the Kulish representing Latvia has showcased the easiest quadruple loops in practice, glorious triple axel, he can do quad loops, so he's capable of so much more than is even allowed to be done in a junior men's short program, but unfortunately still made mistakes with the triple flip, triple toe. That just showcasing what competition can do. That's Olga Kavakova yeah, joins When him. you look at, when you watch this program, you go, wow, this is a real athlete, it's amazing. Look at that triple flip, triple toe with the step out. How's the athleticism and the technique and the time? He hears the triple axle look good in the air, a little bit too far forward, has to touch down with his hand, then stumbles a little bit, just gets really messy after that. This triple lutz. And that was a beauty. Nice, soft knees on the landing, good flow out. But details, you know, in the spins, there's a lot of traveling there. The positions are kind of weak in, in many ways. You want to be more defined. So some work to do in that area. I'm sure he loves to jump because that's where you can see the time has been spent so far. But quite an athlete with much more to come. And if he can do the quad lutz already, he's chasing those big elements with big scores. Yeah. Again, just showcasing different focuses for different skaters. And you know, some ma male skaters just love to jump. And I sincerely hope that we get to enjoy him showcasing his technical skills that we've seen in practice here. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, Mark, if you're successful in your own country with what you can do, then you don't really know until you get outside of the country and you go, oh, so what I could do there isn't working for me out here. So then you need to take a look globally and say, oh, I need to improve in this area and that area. That's why getting out internationally, you learn to see where you stack up. 60.02, Peter Gulich goes, oh, okay, that's not bad. That's ninth in the short program so far in the competition. Our next competitor comes from Ukraine. 19-year-old Kirill Marsak, second Junior Grand Prix season. He was 15th at Junior Worlds and 25th at Senior Worlds in Saitama, Japan last year. As a 70.41 personal best in the short program for the European Championships. So certainly has the skill and the experience and will want to deliver that clean performance right now as he skates to pale yellow by Woodkin.
You know, Ted, Kirill and Marta is such a nice chap, such a friendly guy, and he's gone through so much, and you know, he's had to relocate because of his, what's happening in his nation. He's here not even with his coaches. He's got the ice dance coach for Ukraine here to support him. It's his birthday today, and my ah, just my heart aches for him. He's such a nice bloke, but just unfortunately unable today to deliver. But still, again, as we said before, we can see beyond the skate. Oh, and such a wonderful skater. I mean, yes, the mistakes are obvious. Okay, bad day, at, you know, on the ice. But when you take a look at the qualities, this is an amazing skater. This was not a day anybody would wish on any skater, yeah. but walking away from this, he's got incredible skills, both jumping and spinning. Beautiful skating skills as well, but mistakes were made. Here's the triple axel, great lift off the ice, does a three turn and a touchdown, a little bit of a lost balance, but still a good camel position with a nice hop over with good speed. Carries that speed, grabs the leg, Change, uh, change camel spin level four, so it gets all four features with good quality. You can just see the abilities oh. in the skating then just takes an unexpected trip. And the steps and some interesting moves here. Mm. Thank you for that, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Thought that was interesting. Reverse direction as well. Triple Lutz. Oh. And just too far forward, slipping off. And then just a double loop, double toe. So it just went downhill from there. But this is an excellent, not this, this young man is an excellent skater who did not have a good day today. But watch out for him in the future and in the free pro. Yes, and I so hope that, you know, skaters here in the venue will be able to, you know, wish him happy birthday, give him the, the love that he needs because you know, he's had some challenging times. I'm glad that Galena's here with him now. And yeah, you, you're you a good guy, Kirilo. Absolutely. 47.08. He knows what he's capable of, and this is a harsh, hard moment. But he has the skill. We'll see much more from this young man. And sometimes you have to go through this to make the breakthrough. Our next competitor comes from Germany, Luca Funfer. 17 years old, third Junior Grand Prix season, competing twice last year on the Junior Grand Prix, Germ German National Junior Champion. 54.65, personal best last season on the Junior Grand Prix. He's going to skate to Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio.
Well, an emphatic finish and ending position, but a shake of the head showcases the disappointment for Luca Funfurt from Germany. That jump combination will be costly, Ted. Yeah, you know, these, these jumps happen in so quickly <laughs> that if you're just a little bit off or you're not, you're not alert to pull in, then a pop can happen so easily. And then all of a sudden, how does it affect you emotionally during, during the rest of the program? So, wow, I know, you can see his frustration right at the end of the program. He did a beautiful trip a lot, so you can see the skill of this young skater, no question. But the big miss, the big mistake. Here it is. Single flip, goes into the double toe loop, of course. And then double locks a little bit later. As you can see, the quality of his jumping here in the triple lutz, straight back up over the pick. Straight in the air. Nice soft knees in the landing. So that's all there. And you know, the, as we see the, the spin, I, mean, I don't know about all the skaters, but the, the brain can play such mind games, and so often the skaters can be going into a jump and the thoughts can be rapidly changing. You know, last minute, I'm not gonna do this, I didn't. Oh, 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 negative, positive, negative, positive, and that could be so hard, that voice in your head, you know, the good cop, bad cops on your shoulders, coping and keeping them at bay to allow you to be in the moment. That's something that so many of the skaters, you know, struggle with. That's well said. We all have two, maybe more people in our <laughs> head, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it can get pretty crowded in there, right? Yeah. With all these different opinions. Go for it, no, don't go for it, no. <laughs> exactly. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's confusing, and everything happens in a split second. 54.43 for Luca Funfer of Germany, and that'll put him currently into 12th place. Disappointed skater, I'm sure we will see a much better free program. Next skates, representing Turkey. Well, here we go, representing Turkey, Ali Efe Gunes. He's coached by Tefan Anaha, 55.16, personal best of the World Juniors last season. And there's the chant as he will skate to Eleanor Rigby.
skating to Aladdin. <laughs> no. Not the hell of a read me last year's bio. What a strong skater. Absolutely, Ted. And Ali Epigenes from Turkey had told me that he's only been skating for five years. Nice to see his compatriot applauding him from ringside. Started at the age of 13, landed a triple axel wow. at 15, quads landed at 17. So, talk about exponential improvement rate and defying the preconceived ideas about the age that a skater should start. And obviously still has high expectations because that triple axel is weighing heavy on his mind. That is amazing. It had a big skid on the oh. takeoff, had it look good, but the free leg swung wide and high and took him off balance. As we take a look at the triple flip, huge in the air, a little open, not a lot of speed, but muscles his way up to get the triple toe loop done. So strong. Triple lutz a little bit later, this was better. A little bit forward on the landing. So strong, but really, I didn't know that Mark started at the age of 13. Yeah. Remarkable. He's 18 now, that's five years to learn those elements. Never heard of that. Yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I have to assume it'd be just incredible life commitment, just relentless pursuit of the technical mastery of the sport to be able to land. And we can see, of course, he fell in the triple axle here, but he also landed the triple axle here. He just managed to slip off the edge. So excited to see what he can showcase in the free skate. Yeah, and when you love the sport that much as he does, and you have that strength and ability and obviously capacity to learn from your coaches, wow, if he can do that much in five years, well, give him another five years at the age of 23, what will he be doing? Yeah, exactly. And again, you know, uh, uh, you know, shot front window, if you like, for Turkish skating, if he can lay that down, He's going to do what you know we've seen for New Zealanders. He's going to you know put yes. Turkish skating even further on the map and, and inspire. Well, you can hear the inspiration that he's given to those that are watching here. And when the, the skates uh, come good, that'll inspire more. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take a look at the score for Ali F.A. Gunas says uh, 60.58, and he looks pretty happy with that. That puts him currently to eighth place. Maybe showcasing it's a five point PB to his coach. Yeah, that's great. Mission accomplished. More to come in the free program. The final skater here in the men's short program. Also from Turkey, Turkin Emre Insal, 16 years old.
final moment for Furkan Emre Incha from Turkey, the final competitor in the men's short program. And you can hear the reaction and hopefully he can have a, a videographic memory of being a competitor in a junior Grand Prix in your home nation and a delighted crowd clapping you along as you perform. Yeah, and I think the Turkish skaters in all the events they're entered in have really inspired the next generation. We saw the double axle into a twizzle. You can see the excitement, hear the excitement in the building. If you look at the triple flip, it's a free leg back, and see sent it straight up in the air, triple toe loop. Triple Lutz was not so fortunate too far back from the heel on the landing. Right there, back. Couldn't get the free leg behind him to stabilize that landing, but great excitement here in the building for the sport of figure skating and for these young outfits. And you can see the, the where the kiss and cry is situated here in the ring. Just above that is, are the adoring fans that are so happy to support. And this is how you build enthusiasm a next generation and a movement, if you will, towards a new sport. And it'll be interesting to see how it continues to develop. It's been developing very well in Turkey, but it'll be interesting to see how it continues over the next few years. Yeah, and you know, we've got three Turkish men represented here. We've seen triple axles, we've seen triple triples done for them. So technically already on a par, and hopefully then you know, being here, seeing Ebihara, Mikusio, Ryunakata, having them come over here to them. You know, they haven't had to travel to, to be exposed to skaters that are in those higher sixes and sevens in the components will motivate them to demand that as well, now knowing that they've got some technically, you know, compatible elements. Uh, so true. You learn from your environment, and the more that you can skate with the best, the more that you're going to close that gap. You need to first of all understand what the gap is, how far away are you, and what you need to focus on. And you can really do that if you're in the same competition practice sessions as well, of course. And Perkan has a, a good birthday, if you like, is just after that July cut up date. So he could compete potentially, if he chooses to, for three more seasons after this as a junior. And so really lots of opportunity for him to really scale the rankings. Yeah, more opportunity on the juniors to continue internationally on the ISU series. Lots of competitions around, of course, but to be in the Junior Grand Prix for a good three, four years for an athlete gives them tremendous exposure and experience to be gained as they enter senior. So the skater and the coaches cross their fingers. I wonder what would be a satisfactory score. We'll see if we can pitch we'll the reaction. Find out. <laughs> Just a second, yeah. <laughs> You know, we haven't, we've rarely seen anybody confused. You know, happy, sad, no, disappointed, but understanding no. of their score. That's true, absolutely. Nobody's, you know, tilted their head and go, what? Nobody's <laughs> yeah. done that. They, they, they see the score, they go, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. here, here are the scores, 49.64 <laughs> for Perkin. Hoping for maybe a little bit more. That'll put him currently in 16th place. We will take a look in a second. The final standings. Mark, you could take us through this. Look at the crowds leaving. Great to see. And there we see the top three. Fairly safe distance between Ryuna Kata and Lukas Vaklavic. We'll see if they can contend for the medals as we look from 8th to 14th. And knowing that all the men's competitors have a day off, a day of rest. And there we see, hopefully, you know, more success for Krilo Marzak to celebrate belatedly his birthday on Saturday when he competes again. Yeah, a wonderful skater, no question. So that concludes our coverage of day one from Istanbul for all of us here at the ISU. I'm Ted Barton, along with Mark Hanretti. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you'll join us tomorrow for more skating starting with the Rhythm Dance.